How's it going everyone? Scott McKay here from Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks. Today we are fixing a little issue I had during a live feed where I dropped my Micron SB and it bent the needle. So I'm going to show you today how to do replacement parts as opposed to an entire replacement head. You know, obviously the, the most ideal way and the perfection way to get it as new as possible is I want to sell as an entire matched head system, which means the the needle, the nozzle, the air cap, everything is actually checked by a person and matched up ahead of time and tested and tested and put together as a set that you take the whole head off, replace the whole head, and it's done. That's for ultimate perfection. Um, for how I paint, you know, typically I get away with just a fluid nozzle and a needle replacement, and I'm good to go for probably 90% of my work. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do that today and see what actually needs to replace first versus, you know, um, if we need to replace everything or not. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the bowl off because the bowl still has paint in it. And I'm going to take the cap. I usually put the cap in a little mixing cup here. Use a little water. I use water in an isopropyl alcohol mix to clean out this. This had uh, Createx water based in it. If I was using like a solvent, I'd be using a you know, gun cleaner or a lacquer thinner or an acetone or something like that. So I'm going to dump the excess paint in my trash, wipe it out, get the excess out ahead of time, pop the cap off. And then I do the same thing. I'm just going to clean, clean through it, get the bowl cleaned up, make sure it's all good to go. And I'll set that off to the side. You know, give it a good flush. Make sure, make sure you're running clear fluids. You know, so you can see this. You can see clear fluids running through. And if you need to, you can run a pipe cleaner through it and make sure it's super clean. That's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. Move that aside, clean the cap. Make sure it's all good. Make sure we're good in here. And if you got a lot of extra stuff, you can use just like a toothpick or these, these little uh, toothpicks I got it at the hobby store. And they got like a cotton, like a hard cotton swab on the end of it. And you can really get it cleaned up as much as you want there. Let's set that aside. Now, let's look at the airbrush. So, if you look really close here, the airbrush itself, oh, it's a little out of focus. Let's, let's focus that up here, sorry about that. So you can see, I'm gonna try to get it closer. This does not have autofocus, sorry. There we go. So see, I got a nasty little hook in that. Nasty little hook. So what you don't want to do is like pull this back. You pull this back, I'm going to destroy the fluid nozzle. Now, chance start the fluid nozzle is already ruined anyway. But before you go, if you don't want to replace the fluid nozzle, if you don't want to be replacing this right away, you can check it first. But if you pull this trigger back or pull the, you know, take this, if you take the back handle, and rip this needle out, you will destroy the fluid nozzle because you'll bring that hook needle right past it. So what I do first, because we know the needle's junk, i just take a pair of snips here. And I'm just gonna snip off that end. Or at least straighten it out to the point. You know, you get a better pair here. Something gets a little closer, sorry about that. I'm gonna just take these and I'm just gonna snip that point right off the end. Okay, so now I can pull this needle out. And I know this needle's junk anyway because I just cut the tip off. So I usually keep these around as pick tools. You know, I keep these around as pick tools. I usually just bend them and these make nice little, <laughs> nice little pick tools, okay? All right, so now we can double check things. I'm gonna use my Iwata 
little magnifier here. Let's see if we can see what we got here. I don't know if this is going to actually show on camera. It shows enough. You can see in there that fluid nozzle is kind of warped and bent anyway. So let's take the cap off. We're going to take the, the nozzle cap off. Sorry, we're going to take this nozzle cap off. Just going to unscrew it. These go finger tight. Put that down. Now I'm going to double check this one more time. Yeah, you can see that's all smashed out. So there's no save in that one. Okay. The other thing you're going to want to check is the no the the nozzle cap itself and make sure it did not sustain any damage due to the fall. Yeah, it looks good to me. You know, make sure it doesn't have any burrs. Make sure it's not flattened or bent. I've had them where we've actually bent the whole nozzle. At that point, it's probably a head assembly. But we're going to give this a shot and make sure it cleaned up. You know, you can make sure this is clean now. You know, these little Q-tips work great. And just get it all cleaned out. Make sure the nozzle itself is clean. And set that one down. Needle chuck. I'm not gonna need that. I'm not gonna need that. So we know this is junk. I'm gonna take the fluid nozzle off using the right tool here. Get rid of that. And that's the old one. She's definitely junk. See you later. Bye. Okay. So before I go any further, now I'm just gonna clean up this general part. I'm not going to take the whole head assembly off. There's no really need. I'm just going to flush this out. Same thing here. I'm going to use my isopropyl alcohol in my squirt bottle, and I'm just going to squirt through and make sure it's all cleaned up. Looks like there's a little paint back here on the trigger, so I'm going to pull this all apart. She needs it. Probably had a little blow by. I'm going to go through all the parts. So just take it apart and clean it up from there. So let's switch things up here for a better view. All right. So I'll put this aside. You know, we're going to freshen this up. And I'll soak some of the pieces. Like I said, this is. Pretex, so I'm just using like a water and 70 to 1 isopropyl alcohol mix, 70%. I'm just going to throw a few of these pieces in there. I'm going to pull apart the rear section. I'm going to pull this thread out and the spring. These are good. They're not dirty. I'm going to pull the lever. It's got a little paint in it. So probably got either I spilled paint through it or got a little debris back here and that got back. So we're going to, I'm just going to do that, get that all cleaned out. And now we'll take a brush, just a cleaning brush. I'm going to go through. Clean out the needle chuck. Clean out in here. There's a lever. Let me get the lever out of there. The lever's stuck. This is where our little pick tool will come in handy. There we go. There's the lever. Soak that. And we'll give this thing a really good clean out. Yeah, there's definitely some junk in there. This is long overdue for a good clean. I'm just going to do that. And to be 
be safe. I'm going to pull this off either. You can use your the pliers the, uh, that come with the set that have the nice um, you know, Teflon handles. I had this already loosened up a bit. So I'm just going to pull that off. And make sure in here is nice and clean. That looks pretty good. Looks really good actually. We'll just give it a good flush. Clean her out. And when this is done, it's going to run like a new brush. You can always check here, like this, it's pretty clean in here. But you can run a pipe cleaner, you know, through the body and make sure everything's cleaned out nice. You can check your O-ring in here, make sure it's not cracked. And I'm just going to flush this head out as well. And we'll put this right back on. Now what you can do, and I've done it before, so I'm not going to have to do it this time, is I've taken a little beeswax. And I put a little beeswax around the thread, so that way you get a better factory type seal when you put it back on. And I just, what I do when I do the beeswax, I put a little strand about, I leave the gap a little bit like that. I, I roll it in my finger, put it around here, and I usually take a lighter, just click it, melt it, and put it in. And that's enough to get it to seal up nice. You don't need to wrench this stuff. You know, even with the tool, you just need to just snug it. You're not, like, torquing it, okay? And you're not putting a car together. So we got you. Now we'll start putting everything back. Got my lever. I mean, the, the needle guide. Trigger. Yeah, you can use a brush at this point if you want to get it cleaner. I'm going to dirty it up in the next feed. I'm going to put two dots on it. There we go. Just clean everything up, make it good, check everything. And then we'll go to reassemble. All right, guys, I got everything cleaned up here. Everything's ready to go back together. Got my parts laid out. So now, I'm gonna start by putting everything together. I'm gonna get the head assembly built first. So I'm gonna take my Iwata fluid nozzle replacement part. These are genuine replacement parts. These are not aftermarket brands. They're not, they're not parts that say they fit because they fit you know, a similar brush that was you know, modeled or copied from the Iwata. These are genuine stuff. It's really not worth being the guinea pig and trying, um, trying stuff that's not genuine because you're just gonna mess up the brush itself. Okay, so here's your fluid nozzle, super small, very delicate. How I do is I put this into the, the tool first Get it set in there. Take the airbrush. And just slowly spin them together. I'm going to swap because I'm a righty. And you're just finger tight. You just snug and give it. That's it. You're not. Don't wrench it. You wrench it. You will snap this. You snap it, then you got to dig the nozzle out, and it's a pain. Just make sure it's snug. I did the same beeswax treatment on this part to make sure I get a good seal. Set that in place, good to go. If you want, you can check for alignment, make sure everything's lined up good, like I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna have to do that. So basically what you're making sure is everything is like centered. So I know it's hard to see on camera, there's not much I can do about that. You make sure everything's centered. Because if, if that fluid nozzle isn't centered in that nozzle cap, then you know the threads might be bent or something might be bent in the whole head assembly, in which place replace the head assembly. But I can tell it's centered and centered really nice. Okay, we got that. Now what I do is I put the needle guide in first. I put the thread on. Oops. I forgot the spring. Yeah, 
if I got the spring. Again, needle guide, spring, put the spring on, thread it together. This is how I work it. Put it all the way down. I like all the tension on it. Put the needle chuck on there. Now the needle chuck lets you be able to pull it back. And so now, this is the pain for everyone, but I do it like this. I hold this back with my finger. I set the chuck in, I mean, I set the lever in, so that way the curve is going like this, so it sits up against the trigger the right way, and then I insert the trigger. It goes in sideways like this. You turn it, lock it into position. You can feel the spring, and that lever goes right against it, and you're good to go. Okay, got that. Loosen the needle up. Before I do any damage, before I put the needle in, I'm going to put the crown cap back on. This is what got me in trouble in the first place. I paint with my crown cap off often. I want to drop it on the floor. Instead of breaking the crown cap, I broke the needle and ruined everything. So it's a catch-22. Put that on there. Now I'm going to pull the needle. I always open the needle from the back. Don't open for the front. If you open the front, sometimes you can bend the needle. So I usually open the back up and just pop the needle out, check it. If you want, check the needle, these come perfect. You know, sometimes I'll run a little extra polish over it just to make sure everything's good. But that's personal preference. Insert the needle, make sure this is loose so you don't want to jam it. Guide it in carefully. Push it in, it should seat nicely. Just tap. I just put a little pressure. Really should be good. Preset handle back on. Fluid cup. I use this side mount fluid, which is similar, you know, to the older Eclipse model. If you don't have that one, chances are you'll have the factory one or the larger version of the factory one like I do, which is this guy here. Okay. I move around a lot, so I don't paint with this often. We're going to hook our air up to it. Make sure we got flow. And I'm just going to run a little of that thinner through. And make sure we're good to go. We can do a little test spray if we want. But I'm not going to put any color in it right now. I know it's going to be good. And we are good to go. That is how you clean out, repair, and replace some parts on an Iwata Micron SB and get it rolling. Hope you enjoyed this quick video walkthrough on how to do that. Come check out the live feeds most Thursday nights at 8 p.m. here on Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you all next time.